Hello there. This is Xiao, and welcome to today's episode of. In this tutorial, I'll be explaining the basics of synthesizers and automation, and how to use them to create noise risers and wobble bass. For those who are new, remember that if you're lost, check the tutorial archive. So let's get started. Synthesizers. A synthesizer, like Citrus here is an electronic instrument that generates an audio signal. This is different from the recorded audio that we've been working with in the past. With recorded audio, you have sound outside of your software, like an instrument or a vocal. Then, you use a microphone to record the sound. But with the synthesizer, or synth for short, the software itself is creating the sound. This gives you a whole new level of control. Most synths work in the same way. They have one or more oscillators, which actually produce the sound. This one has six. Etc. It also has many other controls to change the sound from the oscillators. I won't be getting into that here, but suffice to say, most synths let you create a wide variety of sounds. Let's talk more about these oscillators. The sound each oscillator produces is determined by the waveform of that oscillator. There are five main basic waveforms. They are sine waves, triangle waves, sawtooth waves, square waves, and white noise. Now, you can make some interesting sounds using just the different combinations of waveforms, but things get really interesting when you add filters to the mix. In my video on equalizers, I introduced you to the high pass filter, and in my video on delay, I introduce you to the low pass filter. You can use these same filters on your synths to great effect. Now Citrus here has three built-in filters, but I'll be using a parametric EQ to make it easier to see what's going on. Filters work best when they have a lot of frequencies to work with, so I'll set Citrus here to its white noise setting so that we have all the frequencies. As you can see, it's full spectrum. So let's put in a low pass filter and see what happens. Makes it a bit more muffled. As I mentioned before, you can change the steepness of the filter. But the filter also has a bandwidth control. When used on a low pass filter, bandwidth actually controls something called resonance. Let me show you. it adds this peak right at the cutoff, which boosts frequencies at that point. This is all well and good, but watch what happens when I change the cutoff frequency while the audio is playing. Pretty cool, and pretty voice-like as well, sort of makes a noise. This right here is the basis for what I call noise risers. Some people also call them noise sweeps. You play the white noise, and then sweep a resonant low-pass filter, like this one, from low to high or high to low. It's a great way to build and release energy in electronic music. So let's set that up. To get the synth to play by itself, instead of having to use the keyboard every time, we have to enter in MIDI data. MIDI is the musical language of computers. The DAW reads the data you enter in, and it translates that into notes played by your synthesizer. Most DAWs have some kind of piano roll tool that you can use to enter MIDI data. This lets you control the pitch and duration of each note. As we're working with white noise, the pitch doesn't really matter. Let's have it play for, say, four bars. And now let's put that in the playlist. There we go. That's for later. And now when I push play, Okay, so now our noise is playing by itself. But what about the filter? 
Well, lucky for you, most DAWs have a way to automate the controls in your plugins so that they change over time. I'll automate the filter cutoff frequency by using a simple automation envelope. Let me just make a quick selection so that we don't make it too long. FL Studio is picky like that. There we go. So here's how the envelope works. You add control points, which determines the value for your parameter at that point in the song. The envelope then draws a line between those points so that the plugin always knows where it needs to be. So let's make it go upward. Like that. Now let's, now let's see it in action. See, it's moving by itself. Uh, sorry about that. It kind of jumps back down real quick and then adds up this huge boost at the very start. Okay, so we can also add more points to the line to make it more interesting. And then we bring that down here and then it'll sweep up and then go down. Which is pretty cool. Most dolls also let you change the curvature of the points between the lines. Noise risers also sound good if you add delay and reverb to them. That's pretty awesome. So that's a noise riser. Next, wobble bass. For this, you'll want to set up your synth to make a wave with lots of frequencies, but one that has a pitch. I like to use sawtooth waves for this. Square waves work too. and we'll make it super low because it's a bass. Sorry if that's a little loud. And I already have a quick pattern of notes. So now we have a pattern for our bass. To make it wobble, we'll again use a low pass filter. And we'll turn up the resonance. Now you can hear why they call them wubs. Now for the automation. Unlike the noise riser, the automation for the wobble bass tends to be fast and rhythmic. So we'll use an automation envelope with a lot of motion. This is much easier to do if you make use of your DAW's time snapping feature so that you can control whether the points are on the beat. Luckily, I pre-made an automation clip for this. So now that we have this automation, let's give it a listen. Pretty good. You can do a lot with automation, especially if you make use of sweeps or sudden jumps. Good wubs have a lot of variety, so get creative. You can also spice it up with some compression and light distortion. Here we have a multiband compressor. Another thing I like to use for my wobbles is unison. Most synths have a unison control, this here. It makes several copies of the oscillators and changes the pitch and phase of them slightly. This causes them to sound all weird and cloudy, and it adds a lot of stereo width. A saw wave with a lot of unison on it is called a super saw. I'll talk more about this effect in my video on chorus, flanger, and phaser. For now, know that unison is a cool thing that you can use on your synths to add some flair. 
So there you have it, a pretty sweet wobble bass. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you liked what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions about synthesizers and automation, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And as always, if you'd like to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. Next time, I'll talk about convolution reverb and how to use it to tame distortion in your mix. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. Okay, stop the video first.